Well, good afternoon and welcome to session two, a panel discussion. Uh, might be the last session of the day and also the last session of the week, but they've kept the best session to the end. So it's simply the best because it, this discussion will be the precursor to what the industry will be talking about for many years to come. So what we're going to talk about today is effectively going to be defining the future of payment acceptance. Soft pods, or the collective term for the new payment um, uh, payment acceptance technology, for what for what of a better word from the PCI uh, SPOC and CPOC terms that you'll hear in the future, and it is a revolutionary new technology that will be effectively and potentially kill the hardware port of sale and PED, the pin entry device. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our first presentation. We've just got one presentation today uh, from Hussein Asidi from uh, uh, Deja Mobile, is a co-founder and CEO. Uh, we've also got a poll during this uh, presentation. So uh, very much like the uh, encourage the um, uh, audience to participate. Uh, so I'm going to hand it over to Hussein uh, before we introduce the other panelists for the the, uh, the debate in the afternoon. Thank you very much, Hussein. Thank you, thank you, Mark. Hi, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining this last session of uh, this wonderful and fantastic MPE summer week. My name is Hussein Masadi. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Dija Mobile. So can we display, display the slides, please? Yeah, thank you. So yeah, I remind the audience that you have already this poll question displayed. So you can, of course, uh, already answer it if you are familiar with the software, the so-called software post topic. Otherwise, you can wait uh, until the end of my presentation to get more familiar with this topic, of course. Um, so I'm happy to be here with you today to share uh, an overview of the opportunities and challenges related to uh, acceptance, payment acceptance uh, for merchants today. Um, I'll be introducing a new generation of solutions, of acceptance solutions, which will contribute to tackle those challenges and bring new experiences uh, at the point of sale. First of all, uh, let me briefly introduce my company, Deja Mobile. Uh, our mission is to enable digital payments for all, meaning that we bring uh, solutions and technology both for issuers and for on the acceptance sides. For, for issuers, uh, we have uh, this ready to tap payment for issuers solutions, uh, which helps uh, banks, retail banks, fintechs, uh, card issuers in general to digitize all their cards in all the available wallets on the market, meaning uh, OEM wallets such as, such as Apple Pay, for example, or the own application of the bank, uh, the so-called issuer wallet application. This is possible in the Android ecosystem where the access to NFC is, is totally open. So this uh, solution is, uh, has been there for more than five years now, certified by uh, several schemes and uh, it's already adopted by several customers uh, in more than 10 countries today. More recently, uh, four months ago, we introduced a new solution on the other side of the business, on the acceptance side. This is ready to tap for merchants. So ready to tap for merchant solution is a software only contactless payment acceptance solution. Uh, this is uh, of course, the main topic of, uh, of, our, uh, of our session. So I will be uh, introducing the, so the solution and uh, giving more details uh, afterwards. Uh, last but not least, uh, we really strongly believe in standards and all our solutions are based on international standards and certified by uh, organizations such as Visa, MasterCard, PCI, etc. Let me give you uh, some key figures and facts about the company. Uh, we are a quite young company. We are 40 people today, uh, totally dedicated to digital payments. So we have uh, more than 35 engineers and research and development experts 
uh, developing our solutions and uh, supporting our customers. Uh, the founding team has uh, a long track record in those technologies, in digital payments, NFC, contactless technologies in general, security technologies, and so on. Uh, as I already briefly mentioned, we have today uh, customers in 10 countries over three continents. In France, uh, this is our home country, uh, we, we are the leaders of, of the HCE solutions, so the issuer wallet solutions, where we have, we claim 60% market share. As I already mentioned, our solutions are certified by payment schemes, so today three payment schemes, and we have in our roadmap other payment schemes certification coming. And uh, to give you an, an idea about the reach of our solution today, we have more than 5 million uh, end users uh, using uh, a wallet enabled by, by our uh, payment SDKs all over, uh, I mean, uh, the 10 countries I have already mentioned. Let me now uh, introduce some market trends uh, on the acceptance side of the business, on the merchant side, before going to the presentation of, of the ready to for merchant solution. So the, the first uh, topic here is about the fact that this market obviously needs more affordable contactless acceptance solutions. So here, here we are, we have some facts and figures. So the first fact is that uh, according to uh, the World Economic Forum, while small businesses are contributing to half of the gross domestic uh, product worldwide, they remain heavily under equipped when it comes to electronic payment acceptance. Uh, 130 million among them, among small and micro merchants, do not have access to this kind of solutions. Of course, there are several factors and reasons for this situation, but the cost factor appears to be a pre predominant one. Uh, the cost of ownership and maintenance of physical payment terminals is uh, too uh, high for small and micro merchants, obviously. On the consumer side, the shopping habits are evolving. Today, consumers, and this has been really discussed uh, during this, the whole week in several sessions, today consumers are willing to use their preferred connected de device, this means their smartphone in general, to, for, for shopping and payments. And of course, they are looking for convenient, quick and safe payment options when they are shopping. And this is brought to them today in physical shops, I mean, by contactless technologies, uh, especially uh, NFC. This is now widely available, at least in, let's say, developed countries. And more recently, and again, this has been uh, discussed during the whole week, uh, with the recent crisis, the COVID-19 crisis, of course, contactless has been promoted uh, by governments and uh, we can notice a, a quick and strong uh, takeoff of contactless payment usage. Uh, all over the world, in particular in Europe. On the other hand, merchants need to introduce more fluid uh, checkout experiences in their retail shops. Uh, for example, they, they want to avoid uh, their, uh, the long lines at the cash register desks. So for this, some retail stores are equipping their salespersons with tablets, with professional uh, devices, uh, often tablets. Of course, they use, uh, salespersons uh, use their these tablets to guide the consumers in their product uh, choices. But of course, they can also, or they could also use the same devices to accept payments, avoiding uh, the consumers to, to go to, uh, to the, and to queue at, at the uh, register desk, okay? So this is what I mean by seamless checkout experience. Another trend that we, are, we can observe today in retail stores is the progressive uh, deployment of a new generation of POS devices, often based on Android OS, by the way, uh, which are open uh, to host several applications and value-added services, such as, of course, a cash register application, but also lo loyalty management and, of course, payment acceptance. We often use the term of smart POS to uh, qualify this new generation of POS terminals. Based on all these trends and on our internal research and development efforts, uh, we, are, we are able to bring today to the market a new generation of acceptance solution based on software only. 
this solution is universal. As a merchant, you will be able to accept all kinds of contactless payments, all kinds of form factors, I mean, uh, cards, of course, but also uh, wallets uh, on smartphones or wearable devices. It's also universal because it covers all the available uh, schemes that do accept this new, of course, uh, specification. So currently, this is Visa and MasterCard. Uh, second, this solution is easy, it's simple to use. Uh, as a merchant, all you will need is your, let's say, regular in, uh, existing uh, Android device, either smartphone or a professional tablet. And turning this device into payment acceptance terminal will be as easy as downloading a new merchant application. Last but not least, of course, this solution is cost effective. Why? Because it's 100% software based. So you will get rid of the cost related to the ownership and maintenance of dedicated uh, payment uh, hardware. This solution is composed of two parts. So the first part sits on the mobile device, on the smartphone or on the tablet. So this is a white label mobile application for merchants, which is compliant with the so-called PCI CPOC specification and to, with payment scheme specifications as well. Uh, it is uh, today, again, uh, proposed as a white label application that can be personalized, for example, for an acquiring, for an acquirer, for a service provider or for a merchant brand. We also provide uh, this solution as an Android SDK for partners who are uh, aiming to build their own merchant application and go for a certification so that they can propose the application under their own uh, brand and in their own solution. The second part of our solution is a platform. This platform is available in SaaS mode. It's operated in a PCI DSS certified and GDPR compliant environment. This platform is plug and play for acquirers and PSPs. We are exposing uh, APIs based on standards on Nexo and ISO 8583 for the integration or and connection with the, let's say, acquiring environment. It proposes a full range of services uh, related to security and to end security. So the uh, let's say device security, but also end uh, to end security of the transaction flow itself. Uh, so this is related to attestation and pr protection of the confidentiality and integrity of the uh, of the application and the related transactions. The second set of uh, services is around post management. So those who are familiar with uh, physical post management uh, know about terminal management systems. So this is the equivalent of the terminal management system in the software in a, uh, only POS uh, world. Third service uh, set of services uh, is merchant management. So you have uh, the possibility, of course, to as an acquirer, for example, or service provider to merchants to create uh, your merchant, merchants and board them, organize uh, a, a hierarchy of merchants, outlets, etc., and manage all this over time. And uh, last but not least, we have a, a set of features of reporting features. So we are able to create reports for merchants, for each individual merchant, but also for acquirers or for the service providers who use our solution to serve merchants. So again, this solution is available today. It's being certified and we are at the final stage of certification by Visa and MasterCard. And uh, we will start also, we are, we are starting the CPOC certification which will be available at the end of this year. Uh, to the last part of the, my presentation will be an overview of uh, some use cases enabled uh, and allowed by this new generation of uh, software only acceptance solutions. The first use case and probably the massive one is again about uh, equipping small merchants with an affordable acceptance solution. So this is a mobile post solution. Of course, we are here in the bring your own device approach. The small merchant will be using the, his, her or his own device, will download the merchant application and immediately will be able to, accept, uh, able to accept contactless 
payments. So this is straightforward and easy. The second use case I want to share with you today is related to what I have already called the seamless checkout experience. So let me uh, take here the example of a restaurant because we all have this experience. So some restaurants today are, have equipped their waiters with handheld devices in order to take the orders. So this is very convenient. This is a nice experience. But when you, it comes to payments, so you enjoyed your meal and you want to pay and check out, in general, the experience is less, uh, let's say, less uh, convenient. Why? Because if you have, say, 10 waiters, probably you have two or three uh, physical POS devices. So you have two options. Either you wait at your table for the one of the two or three devices to come, or uh, you go to the, let's say, cash register counter and pay. And in general, you, you have a long line for this. So imagine if the handheld devices of the waiters are equipped with this software solution to, to, to accept payments. Of course, the payment and checkout experience will be very seamless and very straightforward and nicer than today. The third use case I want to share with you is related to peak season situation where, for example, imagine the sale season where shops, in, yes, so I have two minutes, uh, one minute to the left, right? Is it right? Yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, the, the, the third use case I wanted to comment here is related to the peak seasons. So uh, for these peak seasons, uh, shops in general hire uh, temporary salespersons to help cus customers and consumers. And we can imagine that uh, those salespersons are equipped with smartphones uh, with this uh, merchant application for accepting payments for, again, a seamless and quick checkout experience. So I think I'm running out of time, if I understood well. So I will not be commenting all the other use cases. Uh, but just maybe concluding now by saying that, um, of course, this is a new technology. This is a new payment technology, but it's more than that. It's a way for bringing new experiences and allowing merchants to propose new checkout experiences for their consumers and at the same time optimize their business. So I would be happy to discuss this topic with you if you have any questions and again, Thank you for your attention. Thank you for being here. And Mark, the floor is yours for the panel discussion. I'm going to quickly introduce our panelists. Um, without further ado, as uh, Rodney Farmer, I'd like to ask uh, Rodney to introduce himself. He has uh, many years of uh, industry experience within payments, and today he represents the PCI Council. Uh, thank you, Mark. That was uh, that was a great uh, presentation, Hussein, and, and you're really out there on the uh, on the forefront with regard to what we're doing at uh, uh, in the payments industry and as well with the PCI Council. Um, as Mark said, I represent um, the uh, PCI uh, Security Standards Council. I sit on the board of advisors. Um, I'm just uh, completing my my fourth term on the board of advisors, so. Um, having witnessed this entire uh, SPOC, C-SPOC, and now C-SPOC with PIN, uh, which is a new thing coming out and we'll talk about it in a few minutes. Um, it's, it's nice to see the industry changing at such an exciting pace. Um, if you all know, you know, 10 years ago, we were in a rather sleepy industry and now things are, uh, are changing at a pace um, that hardly anyone can keep up with. So look forward to sharing more with you. To, to be honest, Rodney, I've always believed payments has been sexy. So anyway, so uh, let me introduce uh, David Poole, who's been probably been at the leading edge of some of this new revolutionary technology, uh, if not the bleeding edge. So uh, uh, David representing uh, my pin pack. Yes, thanks, Mark. Hi, everyone. And a great opportunity to talk with you today. Uh, as you say, yeah, we go back, my pin pack was formed in 2012 and really have been at the vanguard of everything SPOC and CPOC since that time. We were the first to get our CPOC certification this year, um, getting listed uh, in July. And um, we have now a healthy backlog of projects which we're bringing to market excitedly at the end of this year and throughout 2021. So pleased to be here, thanks. 
Thanks, David. So uh, I'm going to ask uh, for us to see that before we get into the questions and the discussion on the panel uh, around contactless and touchless payments, uh, I'd like to ask uh, for the results of the first audience poll, uh, which uh, asked the question, what are the main benefits for merchants? And oh, wow. <laughs> Is, uh, can we get that a little bit bigger so, so I can read the small numbers? So what are the main benefits? Can we see that a little bit bigger for everyone? I think uh, convenience and no extra hardware, that's coming out uh, yeah, really high. Um, seamless checkout is coming out high and equally high is best response and then there's other at the bottom. I could just about read that. It's interesting that the low cost uh, of investment is pretty uh, low. In fact, no one's voted for that. Uh, but we'll come back to that. Um, let's get uh, on with the panel discussion. But thank you for that uh, contribution. And I know there's a, another poll question uh, available uh, for the audience, and we'd appreciate you to uh, share that. Um, um, I'm going to get the, the panel uh, to do a little bit of a challenge. Uh, I don't know if you've heard some of the sessions during the week and the word pandemic is used quite a lot. In fact, it's overused. So that I, where if you really do mention the word pandemic, I'm going to make a note of that and I'm going to tot up the scores at the end and the person with the lowest score wins. So just to bear that in mind. So no P word, please. So uh, about three years ago, when this was all starting to bubble up uh, around softballs, uh, Edgar Dunn & Company wrote a paper uh, about, and it was asking the question, is the PED dead? Is the pin entry device, the hardware device dead? So there's three areas, there's three topics I'd like to cover uh, with the panel. First, um, the customer experience, the point of interaction, the actual, what are they, what is the customer journey? Now I know Hussein's put, um, Hussein has, has touched on some of those new use cases. That's fantastic. Um, so we'll get into more detail around that. So I'm going to ask Rodney to kick that off. Second question is around what does it mean for the, the industry? So PSPs and acquirers, and, and we also have to mention the, the traditional hardware manufacturers. And the third question, I'm going to ask the panel towards the end to step back and think about the market as a whole um, in terms of market, geographic market, where, where is it going to, where is this mass adoption going to happen? Um, is it emerging markets? Is it, is it developing markets? Um, or, and also part of that, I'm going to talk about Moby Wave and that small company called, let me just get the name of it, $2 trillion company called Apple. And what that has certainly grabbed a lot of attention in the news uh, headlines beyond the payments industry. Um, and what does that mean? So, first of all, Rodney, um, maybe you could give us a little bit of history uh, and what does it mean for the merchant and the customer interaction um, from a PCI uh, point of view? What does it mean, these new standards? And, and this terminology, SPOC and CPOC, maybe just touch, touch on those as well. Okay. So, you know, first of all, uh, no, I don't think they're going away anytime soon, the, the actual uh, merchant uh, devices. So we can expect those to be around for a while. Um, just to share a couple of, of stats, the, uh, the SPOC, which is software-based pen entry on COTS or consumer off-the-shelf devices. There's nine listed solutions today, uh, having that, um, uh, uh, that technology deployed. Um, then there's um, CPOC, which is contactless payments uh, on consumer off-the-shelf devices. So you make a contactless payment. It doesn't allow, doesn't facilitate the, the use of a PIN uh, in those transactions. And Hussein and, and uh, um, uh, David, the, the, the likelihood of, of you know those nine certified or listed uh, software uh, solutions and then the two uh, CPOC uh, solutions taking over the world uh, today is uh, is not high, but uh, certainly these types of devices, all integrated with our our handhelds and and um, 
and other you know, more more mobile devices. Certainly, they're um, they're far more ubiquitous. They're more affordable. They're they're just easier to use. So we do expect it to you know to let's say disintermediate or or at least be a competitor to the older uh, uh, PTS devices. It's certainly not going to uh, to change the world today. Then finally, the the uh, CPOC with PIN is a uh, is a new standard that uh, PCI uh, Council are uh, putting out in RFC. Or, uh, request for comment uh, should come out. The first uh, uh, opportunity to comment on the on the standard would be first quarter, or second quarter, 2021, and finalizing that in uh, 2021. And the the early certifications on that one would probably be in uh, 2022. So we've got quite a while before, and you know, quite a while is probably a short amount of time for for you guys to develop that, but. Uh, in fact, uh, it'll be 2022 before we see these uh, contactless uh, payment on cots uh, with a PIN. And that does mean PIN entry on a, on a consumer off-the-shelf device. So um, quite cutting edge. The standards will be uh, interesting to read when they're, when they're published, but we're looking forward to facilitating those, those types of transactions and seeing where the market leads us. Well, thank, thank you very much, Rodney. That's really good. Um, I'm going to ask David to step in to the uh, the discussion around the customer journey and what it what it, the point of interaction. What does that mean? You know, do I you know do I how do I know I'm actually use, as a consumer? How do I know I'm actually using a le legitimate because it might just look like an iPhone or an I iPad? Uh, how do I know I'm talking to the right customer service person in the merchant? What does that what does that experience feel like yeah i think that's a, a really interesting question mark there's a lot of uh, trust uh, around a, any transaction uh, fundamentally so you know again picking up on rodney's comments i don't see this being a ubiquitous solution that's going to eradicate hardware terminals in any short-term basis but it's certainly going to find its place amongst other solutions and for merchants who already have a device and for merchants who want to add or augment payment to an existing range of applications that they're running on a typical device, it's going to be very appealing because it reduces uh, not only the cost of uh, procuring that device or the, the value that they have from that single device doing multiple tasks, but it also makes it a lot simpler to deploy and to manage and to control. Uh, simply the fact of not having to charge a second payment device alongside uh, the the uh, the operating device is in itself very interesting. Coming back to your uh, point around trust and the use of cardholders in all of our pilots to date, and we've been involved in several uh, in different parts of the world. Payments people we find always have the difficulty of being convinced that the general public and cardholders generally will trust a, a device. Um, we've always found this not to be an issue. Um, a square, I think, uh, is one of the very first uh, uh, adopters of this technology, certainly uh, found this in Australia and in subsequent markets in the UK. And we watch people all the time putting pins into essentially COTS devices without any hesitation because there is inherent trust that I provided a service in the case of a counter or a bar, I'm passing a drink over the counter in a shop or in a service environment, I fix the plumbing or I fix the roof. I am therefore trusted by the cardholder having performed a service. The idea that, you know, I'm just going to be able to walk down the road and people are going to ask me to put my card details into their phone when they've done nothing for me is, is far-fetched to say the least. So if I've trusted someone to come into my home to fix my plumbing, I know them, then I'm going to trust them. Similarly, in tier one retailers, where we have a lot of interest now um, starting to develop, they are trusted because of the bricks and mortar space. Think of the click and collect model. If a, if a retailer is doing today a card not present click and collect service, and this gives them the ability to very quickly, very efficiently collect a card detail and in time, as Rodney says, collect also the PIN to verify and authenticate that transaction. There's a real financial benefit to that retailer that's available in terms of the reduced fees. So we see this as a, very general uh, technology, which will deploy in lots of different scenarios. 
Another one is, is roadside, you know, so large roadside organizations doing services, AA, RAC, that sort of thing. Postal services, delivery, home delivery. The ability to better authenticate and reduce, mitigate the risk around the transaction has universal appeal. And therefore, this technology will evolve and develop and it will get deployed in all of those scenarios and more. Not necessarily are we going to replace the uh, multi-lane um, tier one supermarket retailer. I'd see that as one of the, the last bastions for this technology. But there is lots of scope and lots of play in the market generally for this technology to be very well used as part of a, a merchant proposition. And Rodney, Rodney alluded to the, 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 the CPOC with PIN. Uh, be interested, David, uh, are, you, are, you, are you anticipating yeah. that is a part and parcel of the CPOC expectation from both a consumer point of view and a, and a, and a uh, merchant point of view? It's an absolute must. And I'm glad that PCI have, have recognised that in terms of the European market space with PSD2 and where the issuer can challenge for the PIN, even though the transaction may be below the CVM contactless limit, um, the merchant proposition demands the use of PIN. PIN and the securing of a PIN is one of our specific core competencies at my PIN pad. We are already today uh, running projects under waiver from Visa and MasterCard um, to deploy ahead of the schedule in mm. accordance with the scheme rules, um, the use of PIN. And absolutely in the fullness of time, we're on the uh, mobile task force as a participating organization with PCI we would expect to um, be one of the early movers to gain the uh, CPOC with PIN certification so that we can deploy that at, uh, at huge scale. So as a, as a consumer, they enter the PIN just like they do today, but it's on a, on a touchscreen device. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, one of our core competencies around PIN has allowed us to achieve the standard without scrambling the PIN pad. Several okay. of the nine companies that Rodney mentioned would be scrambling the pin pad or they'll be using a, a specific uh, secure element or TEE on a device. Mm. We are not restricted in terms of using a, C, a TEE on the, on the device. And we also present a uniform, perfectly normal, perfectly as expected pin pad uh, with the normal display. So no scrambling of the pin pad. And in our findings, that is a significant advantage. Cardholders then know inherently exactly what's expected of them they find their pin easily and they can complete the transaction so moving on to the same question to hussein um and it's around it's interesting on your presentation you talked about cost and when we looked at the poll yeah, cost was not really part of the equation uh because obviously there's still a big infrastructure in terms of the back end the software part of the the, the necessary security, the as, as testation uh, services, the key management, etc. I'd be interested in your point of view. You, you were talking about, you know, this is part of the, the sales proposition is to, it's going to be cheap because it's software based. Is that true? Is that the case? Yeah, I think it is true and I will try to explain why. Uh, when we talk about the cost, we have to consider the total cost of ownership uh, over a long period of time, okay? So think about the updates. Think about the integration of new payment means. Think about the integration with new value added services, okay, over time. Since our solution, and uh, I guess my PinPad one is also uh, has the same kind of architecture. Again, it's based on, uh, it's hyper modular, if you want. Uh, it's based on APIs and on the uh, device side, it's just an application. So updating an application is easy, okay? So if you consider not only the, the cost, you know, the license cost or the initial cost that you see uh, at the beginning of the project, but the total cost of an ownership, considering the fact that your solution will not be static, the, the scope will evolve over time, I'm sure that the integration costs and the maintenance costs will be much more efficient. And this is, uh, in general, the case when we, I mean, when we move to digital uh, and, uh, let's say, more flexible uh, architectures uh, for any kind of service, I mean, it's not specific to this, uh, to this I mean, uh, uh, topic. 
But of course, uh, I don't want to see that uh, to say that this solution will be cheap. I did not use the cheap term uh, because, of course, there's security has a cost because it is it needs still to be secure. Uh, David has explained uh, the expertise my pinpad has. Uh, for managing, for example, and protecting pin entry on devices, on uh, general purpose devices. And we have similar, of course, solutions and we have the same uh, type of uh, knowledge and competencies. We have been developing, for example, SDKs for HCE payments on the uh, issuing side, where uh, it's very similar. We have to protect very sensitive information related to, uh, you know, uh, session keys, etc on a software in a software only environment android environment so this is very mm -hmm. similar and we have to prove this because it has to be it needs to be certified and his this of course will have a cost it's not cheap but it's cost yeah. effective it's cost effective yeah okay so for merchants whenever you talk to a merchant they they usually like to see things that are cheap <laughs> yeah and, cool. and a simple solution if it if it removes the need for hardware and you know, servicing of hardware, then it's got to be good news for the merchant. Is that what you're saying? Yes, exactly. Servicing of hardware and again, all the costs relating to maintaining the system where you have a hardware piece in the middle. Because mm. again, the, the payment, uh, yeah, maybe let me comment another point that has been introduced by, by my colleagues. In fact, the payment will be ubiquitous. You will ha have this payment feature in several terminals. So you will not uh, have devices specifically dedicated to payments. We will have in the future a payment feature in, let's say, a multi-purpose device. So the, the hardware will be there, still be there. It will not be, mm. uh, be disappearing. You will still have uh, machines, <laughs> hardware uh, in, in the retail yeah. stores, but general purpose with a payment feature embedded. Okay, and this payment feature will be software only. This is the... So, and say, using uh, commercially off-the-shelf devices. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Rodney to step in on the next question, which is around really what do you see, uh, Rodney, from a, from a soft pulse? What does it mean for the PSPs and the acquirers in the, the acceptance value chain? Is it, um, you know, you know, really exciting opportunity for them to offer new services to their merchant Per, you know, merchant community, or is it just another value add service that uh, that eventually they'll um, add and um, and try to sell over and above uh, the the current um, legacy infrastructure in terms of acceptance? What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, thanks, Mark. I, I just to kind of this this is an extension of the answer previously with uh, with David and Hussein. The um, if you look at the current EFT devices, those, those machines, the cost of those are not completely out of out of sight regarding you know the cost of let's say an Android handheld off the shelf device. So this is not about cost; it's not about hardware cost at all. It's about the convenience. So just to reinforce uh, what they were commenting on there, and it and it goes further. You're asking the question about the PSPs. So for the smaller providers or the ones that are, are providing more predominantly these uh, uh, spot cuts uh, type uh, solutions, this is this is open territory. So they've got a great place to go out and, and market and sell and and capture the imagination of the merchant um, and, and the consumer for that matter on how they can sell into the market. While you know the existing providers with with lots of hardware and and infrastructure uh, built around that uh, and their entire business built around the, the hardware devices it'll take time for them to you know i wouldn't say decouple but integrate those solutions in so that you they too are able to create an a uh, a fully integrated and uh, environment so this is and often you know we if you're buying from or, or dealing with uh, you know those large payment providers, the, the larger acquirers in the market, we all know that they move slower. But that's that's just a natural thing for you know for a larger provider. But in fact, they tend to catch up. They're watching. They're paying attention. They're developing, and they'll be rolling out solutions. And then they'll also be collaborating with um, you know, the providers, the people who have been more innovative out on the front of the uh, curve to develop these solutions for merchants. So, I. I don't think um, you know there's a there's a 
a single answer here. It's just a continuum of time. But certainly the merchants are going to be the winner because the the, the ability to, to combine these uh, multiple solutions where their entire inventory management, their settlement processes, all of these, um, uh, you know, the payment process itself are all combined together in a uh, in an integrated solution will be a, a terrific um, uh, service and one where the merchant and the consumer will enjoy a, a better experience in, in uh you know, in their shopping experience. And, and Rodney, uh, you know, they, 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 the language of touchless has really penetrated the, the lexicon, the marketing lexicon of, you know, everything from buying a, a pint of milk to buying a car. It's all about touchless services. Um, do you think this technology is going to encourage, uh, we've seen um, the P word, uh, the COVID, um, impact of contactless do you think this uh, technology is only going to help facilitate more contactless payments across a wider audience a wider selection of merchants absolutely i thought you were trying to uh, entrap me into the I know, into, I won't <laughs> but um <laughs> the uh, the fact is 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 because of uh, the increases in the uh, uh, the limits for, or the CBM limit in, in the uh, European sector. And I, I suppose this happened around the world, but definitely across Europe on about a 50 euro uh, you know, average value uh, since probably April, May, the, uh, the markets have all adopted this 50 euro uh, CBM limit. So we now have, we can capture a great deal of the transactions in Europe on a contactless basis, which means these devices will be you know, very well suited to go forward uh, as they are listed today. So we're quite excited about that part. We're contactless um, the way to go. My, sorry to interrupt, but on my uh, teleprompter uh, with questions, electronic teleprompter, I've got a question coming in from the audience. I think, uh, David, this might be one of your questions. Uh, not your question, I mean, a question for you, David. Um, uh, if you look at the Far East, there's obviously looking at the uh, Asia Pack. Uh, market where they've moved to QR codes. And I think also you'll see in Brazil, they've kind of moved into QR codes. Surely this is a simpler solution. Why do we need CPOC with PIN and NFC and all those things? Why don't we just go down the QR code uh, storyline? And uh, we are, are slightly running out of time. So quick, quick answers. I'm sorry, David. Yeah, no, very quick answer to that. I think, you know, the, the merchant just wants to accept any payment. So certainly QR has its space for that. But if I present a card, he's got to be able to accept a card as well. So the challenge is really for the acquirers, the PSPs, to combine all of these payment methods, removing the complexity in a simple solution for the merchant. And there's more opportunity to do that in a, in a non-specific consumer off the shelf device than there is in a payment terminal. And that really supports the model that yes, I may well want to do a QR code payment. I also want to accept cards. I want to accept any payment that's proffered to me as a merchant. Mm. I just don't want, I don't want any complexity. I just want to be able to do it. And I can do that on a relatively low cost consumer off the shelf device that I can also run other applications on. That's absolutely the, the heart of what we're doing. So QR has its place. Okay, that's a good point. Um, so demise, we've seen the demise of cash um, over the the, uh, the period of the, uh, the COVID. Um, and, and, and cash is so last century, and it's like comparing vinyl records uh, with Spotify. So what I'd like to do is um, sort of uh, ask a question around where do we sit and take a step back, where do we expect uh, mass adoption? Is it likely to be the emerging markets like Brazil, India, uh, China, etc., where they're going to leapfrog uh, the traditional hardware point of sale into a software environment, uh, the soft pass solution. Rodney, I mean, maybe you, from a PCI point of view and also from where you're seeing these applications to become certified as SPOC or CPOC, where are you seeing? Is there a pattern forming or is it too early to say? Rodney? Probably too early to say, um, although I'll hazard a guess that a large uh, percentage, what I've, what I've heard in the market is that uh, Central and Eastern Europe, the European corridor seem to be developing a great deal uh, and in the in this listing process. So 
uh, that's that's encouraging. Um, and it, it certainly from a need perspective, there's mm -hmm. places that do not have the penetration of, of the hardware device per million people, for example. And it's going to be those places that take the easy uh, route where you, you can literally download your point of sale solution. Um, I would say one of the more interesting things just to comment on that a little further is just how do we track those devices and, and how the acquirers um, adopt and manage their relationships with those merchants will be uh, where some innovation will take place going forward that maybe we haven't seen uh, even that question until now. That's good. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to ask all the panelists the final question because we're all running out of time. And I just, uh, um, Hussein, Hussein, just, uh, just uh, your, your one line answer. Uh, what does it mean with Apple buying MobiWave? Does that shake up the industry? Is it going to change the landscape? Is it going to, what's, what, what's your view? What's your prediction for the next uh, 18 months to two years? So yeah, in one short uh, sentence, this will become a reality with Apple, Apple entering the game. It was the same story with mobile payments on the consumer side and uh, Apple Pay in 2017. So I am expecting the same story to happen again on David? the other side, the acceptance side. David? Yes, I think similarly, there's no way Apple spent, you know, allegedly how much they did it, without a clear idea of what they're going to do. So it legitimizes the whole area of uh, I think acceptance on mobile, so the industry needs to be aware and ready for when they make their moves. And Rodney? Um, you know, a rising tide floats all boats. Um, <laughs> yes. Maybe a lot of water to take on, but let's uh, let's uh, ride with it. I think it's going to be, it, it will certainly bring a great deal of attention. And yes, I think that's, that's encouraging for the industry and for uh, softballs. So I'd like to thank the panelists for the session and really appreciate your contributions. Um, MPE uh, Summer Week has been has exceeded my expectations. I hope it's exceeded your expectations from an audience point of view. And uh, I'd like to thank everyone. Uh, we haven't got time to show the results of the, uh, the poll, but thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you. Thanks very much, Mark. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye.